Right, so uh, workshop one, uh, especially part two, was type of a wake-up call for those who think that they um, know exactly how to program. It's kind of a, and, and what you see over there is not beyond your IPC 144 knowledge at all, okay? So what happens with, with the, so how do we actually approach when we see something like this? Let's go actually to a sample of the record that we had over there. Um, that it says, this is the dictionary we're supposed to read. Oh, this is the record, right? So essentially, what you have that you're supposed to read is something like this, right? Let me just move this back a little. Doesn't slip. Like this, and like this, and this one comes back. Right? Is this how it's supposed to be? Am I correct? All right. So how to analyze this? First of all, um, tell me, with respect, to, with respect to dictionary, what entities do you see in here? What is the first thing that you see? A, de a defined word. So a defined word is a word that has definitions, right? What the, we forgot the main thing. No, dictionary. First, you have the dictionary. And the dictionary is a set of words and their definition, right? So, so your dictionary is made of a set of words. Now, each word is made up of what? Why everybody forgets the exact, the most important thing? The word itself, and then it types and definition, right? So, so, and a type and definition is made up of? Is there anything that is not made of characters in the world? <laughs> type and definition. Type and definition is made up of? Type and definition. Type and definition that it repeats, right? OK, so that's, so we have to, we, the, the, there's a the, the easy like way, like if you are a seasoned programmer, you can do top bottom design, where your brain is, you, you are like a chess player. You know how chess players work? They see several different moves forward. But, so they, they know what to move, so what happens? When you can't do this top-bottom design, you do bottom-top design, which means you go to the smallest piece, you do that one, then you build the next one over that, and the next one, and you, you get. So the lowest, the, the, the smallest thing over here is the definition. So first, we need to be able to read a definition, correct? So if I want to read a definition, what does, what does a definition start with? Backslash T, right? So we have to read, okay? We have to, to read a definition. So read definition. What it needs to do first is skip tab, right? That's the first thing. Then what you need to do? Then what you need to do? Up to where? To column. Beautiful. So then I have to read up to column, right? Then what I need to do? New. No. Then what I need to do? No. Skip the column. You just, you say, I walk to the door. Then what you do? You open the door, OK? So when you get to certain thing, you stop at it. You have to remove it and continue, all right? So now what you need to do, skip the column, right? Now that we skip the column, what do we need to do? Read up to? Read up to new line. Beautiful. Read up to? New line. Then what we need to do?
Whenever read up to after that is standard. When we did read up to column, what did we do after? Skip the column now, right? Now we read up to new line. Then what do we need to do? Skip the new line. Yes, now we have to skip the new line, right? Done. That's, that's it. That's what you need to do first. How do we do that? Yes. Oh, did I say new line over there? Skip the column. Uh -huh. Oh, that's new line you mean? Oh, okay, okay. So, so my apologies. Let's clear it. <laughs> Oh, they changed the edit editor. They are doing stuff that, okay, I, I'm not used to it. I'm going to, I get used to it. Read, read up to new line. So it's, and then skip the, right? Are we, oh gosh. Then skip the backslash n, right? Now, how do we do that in C? So if this is the format screen for scanf, f scanf, v scanf, s scanf, any type of scanf family, what is the, the, the format thingy? Skip the tab, right? Skip the tab and read characters up to, it means not, right? Column and skip the column. But we have to skip a space too, we, we, we missed that. So it's not only column, skip the column and space, right? So in here, I'm going to add an extra space. That has to be skipped because it says file is well formatted, and we are assuming that there's no errors in it, OK? And then after that, what do we do? Uh, read up to new line, which means I'll read up to and not new line, right? And then I skip the new line. If I can type it, right? How many percent signs you see? So this is some kind of scanf, right? So we have scanf, f scanf in, in your case, and then whatever the file is and whatever over here, I don't care. It has to return what? What are the number of percent signs? One, two, right? Should, so it should return two to be successful. Scanf returns number of fields it reads, so it should return two to be success, right? Next, so we did read definition, correct? Now, what is the next thing we need to do? We are going one level higher. A definition comes with a type. This is the type. OK, a definition comes with definition. Sorry, these type and definitions come with words. So now I have to read word. I read the type and definition, read, OK, sorry, read type and definition. Is that better? OK, so you're reading type. Now we need to read the word. So how do we read the word? Read the word. OK, how do we read the word? The word starts from the beginning of the line and ends up to? So we read up to. By the way, these, are, these may be wrong because I didn't really I didn't really look at the specification. I'm trusting what a student told me. So if the format is not as what the workshop is, fix it. OK? Read up to new line, correct? And then what do I do? And then what do I do? Skip it, right? Skip the new line. So I read off the new line, skip the new line. That's that. Then after that, what do I do? After, I want to read the whole word, word record, everything. After that, what do I do? Read, type, and definition. I just did it. Bottom, top design. How many times? How many times? What is the maximum number of things that we can we have? Eight, beautiful. So we're going to say read, type, and def 
up to eight times or if it fails, right? So that's the loop. You're going to write a loop, and you're going to read one by one. You're going to check to see if it returns two or not, and then whatever, right? Are we good with that? So after, that's reading the word. So as soon as it comes over here, it fails. It means you're here, and you can go to the next one, right? Now we're going to read the dictionary. How do we read the dictionary? Read the whole thing. Read the dictionary. We are doing pseudocode. We are not creating a pointer. Read the dictionary. OK, now what we're going to do, we have to, hump, I have to keep reading words, right? And their definition, right? So how many words maximum I should read? 100. Thank you. So 100, so I'm going to say read uh, the word up to 100 times. Or if it fails. Done. Now, code this. These are our loops. And you start, so first, the, the function, the smallest function that you're going to read is this. You start with this one. You finish that function. That function does everything. Take only lines of types and definition. Create a file that only has these things tested, see if it works. You're good. After that, you start with a word. Create a word like that. Write the function for the word that is reusing that function. See if it reads the word to the end. Good. After that, write the dictionary and everything is done. OK? And you design your class the same way. What do I mean by that? Type and definition. What do I have in a type and definition? I have. A type and a definition. What is the, so in here I have struct, I'm going to call it TD. That's not TD bank, that's type and definition. Okay, because I'm lazy, you, you write it properly, right? Type and definition, right? So I have a type and definition over here. Type and definition. What is the maximum length of a, of a type? 64 characters? Type? This, like, like. When you write adjective, that can be 64 characters? Is it? OK. Is it the definition or is it the type? Type. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Uh, OK, so, so in here, I'm going to say character M type. And that's 64, you said. That's 64 characters. And what else? Definition. So character def. How many characters is that? One zero, oh, so 1024, okay. So is it 1024 including null or excluding null? Not so the, I don't need to put 65 or then 64. Okay, so 1024 like that. So that's your definition. That's what your scan is supposed to read. Now we're going to write the word. What is a word? Struct word. So what does a word have? It has the word itself. OK. So character, whatever, value of the word is. How long can it be? 64. Beautiful. 64. And what? And then what? How many definitions I should have? Maximum? Eight. So now in here, I'm going to say type and definition, MTD, eight. Now you need to have some kind of a way to find out how many. Either add an integer in there to see how many you actually added, or you want to maybe see if the values are empty. I don't know what is your thing. Like you can you can have something like yeah, you can have integer integer uh, m uh, td count something like that. So number of Type and definition that you're, if it's four, you make that four so you know you're not going to go to the end. Right? So that's the, uh, the second one. And what is a dictionary? Struct. What is a dictionary? 
it's just collection of words, right? How many of them? Maximum 100. So you're going to say over here, word, M, W, D, 100. And probably you're going to have uh, an int M, W, D count to see how many are they. And you have your dictionary. Done. OK, so that's after you do this. Now you have a pic picture in your mind what needs to be done. Then you start programming. OK, so are we OK with this? Do we understand the thing? So this is called bottom top design. You can, you can do it with anything. Yes? I would do it. Why not? I would love to. Like for me, anything, even if I have a scanf that I can put it inside a function to be able to identify it, I would do it. I know a single scanf can read the definition, but I would actually create a function called read type and def, and then put the scanf in it so a poor person who's probably you after three years looking at the application, seeing what the heck this function does, this scanf doing, knows that it's actually reading type and definition. Okay? Yeah, I don't know when, but obviously when it's needed, based on your logic, OK? So usually these things, like when you are writing programs like this, you really finish much earlier than, than you expect. So because it's top bottom, bottom top design, you're, you write the first function, and then you write the second function, then you write the third function, and you've got to say, OK, what am I going to do? And you say, oh, it's finished. Usually that's the feeling. And then you test it, and of course, you've got to have some logics here or there, but it's usually successful. OK? So I'm going to put this one over here, call it, um, I, should, I should put a text file. Let me just add a text file over here. Sure. Sure. Whatever works. So I'm going to put this over there, and I'm going to say, actually, I should have named it something. Let me name it something. I'm going to name it uh, A dash W1 P2 uh, uh, bottom top design. .txt. OK. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Are we OK? All right. So, so now that we have that, Let me pause the recording. Remind me to, to unpause, please. So, so uh, we talked about references, reference to references, right? All those things are covered. What was the reference, by the way? Uh, it is unpaused, yeah. So, uh, we talked about references, overloads, uh, default value for arguments. Um, References to references. These are all tricky stuff. It doesn't mean that what, that's what the quiz is going to be on. You know that you have to actually go read the whole thing. So compound types, you need to know what it is. Um, and all, all the little things that explain so that I don't want to waste my time reading what the notes are saying, OK? I'm going to teach you how to program. You read the definitions. I'll test you on it, OK? That's how it works. We are in college. so. I'm not going to open it up and start reading. A compound time is a type that is made up of. I'm not going to do that. OK? So um, keep that in mind. Uh, we talked about arrays, pointers, and arrays. And for some reason, I, have so, I had some difficulty um, uh, with the concept of array. So I want to actually go through it one more time before we start dealing with uh, dynamic memory allocation, OK? So um, 
pointers in arrays. Okay, so this is uh, kind of a quick review on that. Um, and if you think you know exactly what's happened, what, how, you, like you know everything about it, be patient, and we'll go through it one by one. So at any moment of time, when we define a variable, that variable is placed in memory somewhere. So when I say integer var, that variable is sitting somewhere in memory. We know that. The variable that we actually have over there, it can contain a number. I can have int var is equal to 25, which means in that red area over there, I'm going to have a 25 inserted in these four bytes. But if I told you where the variable is sitting in memory, where is it sitting in memory, everyone? Where, where is it? OK, yeah. Where is it sitting in memory? 108 is the address. I know it's silly questions, but I just want to. When I actually say integer pointer PTR, PTR is just another integer who happens to hold weird type of integer, and that integers are positive only. We call them pointers. As you see, what is the address of PTR now? 116. So a pointer has an address too. It's a variable in memory. Although its job is to hold other variables pointers, uh, other variables address, it can it has a variable too. That's 345. We're not going to get into that. Don't worry. Those are pointed to pointers and stuff like that. So when I actually say PTR is equal to the address of var, PTR holds where the variable is and it's going to be 108. Are we okay with that? All right. So if I say target of PTR is 2345, what happens is that it actually puts the value in there. Are we good? Any problem with this down to this point? All right. Now, if I actually say integer AR5, what happens is that it creates five integers in memory. What is the address of the beginning of the five integer over here? 108. I have a mistake over here because I have 124 in here, and then I go to 125 right after. It should have been bigger, so this is wrong. It should shift a little to left. I, I missed the byte <laughs> when I put those. I shouldn't have put 125 in here, okay? So this is wrong, but it's okay. Just assume that it's okay. We don't care. Address of the beginning is what we need, okay? So if I say A3 is 2345, it's going to go from address of the beginning of the error that is 108, and it's going to put the 235 right in the fourth one. Are we okay? Because if I go three, three, uh, uh, integers ahead, it will be one, two, three, then it's going to go into the third one. Are we good? Right? Okay, so that's what it is. Now, the f reality of the situation is that the AR that you see over here is actually a point, is like something like a constant integer pointer somewhere in memory, which actually holds the address of the beginning of the array. So when you are saying integer AR5, you have the five integers. But AR itself is a pointer pointing to the beginning of the array. You OK with that? Don't try to stitch it together in your brain. Accept it as, a, as new information. OK? <laughs> Accept it as, a new, as new information that when you say AR5, six things are created. Five array, and somewhere where we don't know where, a pointer is created in which the address of the beginning of array is stored. And that's why when, if I say target of AR is 235, it goes to the address where AR is pointing like a regular array, and the first element will be set to 2345. So if I say AR2 is equal to 444, which is going to be like that, it's the same as if I say target of AR plus 2, which means to the address of 108, add two integers. What is the size of each integer? 4. 2 multiplied by 4? 8. So 8 will be added to the address, not 2, because adding 2 means 2 
go two integers further. That's why pointers are different with integers. Integers, you add one to them, you add one. If you have integer a, it has five, you add one, it becomes six. But when you have an integer pointer that has four in it, you add one to it, it becomes eight, because four will be added to it. A size of an integer will be added to it, which we don't need to care about, okay? Just, it's good to know, okay? And therefore, uh, that will actually uh, go become 555, five, five, and it sets it over there. So that's what arrays are in C language, C, C++. What you were using was that. In dynamic memory allocation, we are going to get a, take away that AR5 over there and just create a pointer and then do the five manually ourselves. Because of that fact, the syntax of usage of dynamic memory allocation remains identical to what you used before with the statically allocated memory which you used before. No difference. The only difference between dynamic memory allocation and statically used al memory al allocated memory is the creation and the destruction of the memory that is manual. It's not automatic anymore. Got it? Do we understand it? That's what dynamic memory allocation is. So, and we talked about the syntax of dynamic memory allocation. You already know that. Um, just going to quickly bring it back up so, so you kind of remember what it was. As I mentioned, dynamic memory allocation is as uh, is as simple as when you are not doing dynamic memory allocation, the array is inside the program, you've seen it. But when you actually do it yourself, what you do, you create just an, uh, a pointer and you request the five integer to be given to you when program is executed. That's why you don't, need to, you don't need to do it at that time. You can actually create the integer pointer and let it be and ask user, for example, how many things you have and user will go through it and so on and so forth. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Yes. Again, okay. So. When you create an application, you compile it, you have an executable. Right click on it and take a look at it. You will see it has a size that is occupying on a hard drive. When you create an integer, create a big integer, create like 5,000 integers in there. Create your executable. The next time you are doing it, instead of actually do, creating the 5,000, just create a pointer and write new int 5,000. Recompile, take a look at your code you will see your executable is 5,000 integers smaller. Because now, the program that is supposed to run doesn't contain that 5,000 integers within. It actually will get that value from the operating system while it's being executed, and it's gonna be from the shared memory that all applications use, and it's called heap. Okay? Are we okay? All right. So oh, I did a dynamic memory allocation with reversing thing last time, remember? Did we do that? And I said, get series of integers printed in reverse order. Did we do that? We didn't, did we? Let me take a look at the notes from last day. Good for you. I have to make sure everybody remembers. <laughs> let, let me just see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. No, I don't see any notes in anything. I did it in a very, like, very, uh, yeah, I, I did it. You, you're right. But, I'll, but and I said I'm going to start from scratch the next time I'm coming in, right? I did that. Your class asked good questions, and it took more time. OK. And don't worry. If I cannot finish it by, by the time, you're not going to do the quiz now. You're going to do the quiz at home, OK? So if that's the time, I'm going to open the quiz at like 
10 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock at night, leave it open for 10 minutes and close it, okay? Something like that. <coughs> so you got to still all do it together at the same time, but it's got to be late, okay? Or maybe next day you are coming in, I'll squeeze the two quizzes together as one. So I told you that <coughs> if I ask you to get 100 integers from, from the user and find the average, there's no problem. You, you only need two integers created for that. Maybe three, one for the counter. Three integers. One is a counter that is counting the 100 repetitions. The other one is going to be a sum, right, that you're doing. The, and la the other one is going to be the number. So you read the number, you add. You read the number, you add, and at the end, the sum will be divided by, the, by 100. You're going to have the average, right? That's perfect. No problem. But I told you it is absolutely impossible if I ask you to get five, get some in, few integers, if I ask you to get few integers. For the first one, it's, it's not 100. I could have told you, get 100 integers, you would be OK. If I would tell you 1,000 integers, you would be OK. You still need three integers. Because you read, you save, you don't need to keep the original value. You just add the value to, R, to, the, to the sum. Therefore, you don't need to keep the values inserted. OK? But if I asked you to get few integers and print it in reverse order, then it becomes impossible with, without dynamic memory allocation. Because anything you do, I can add a scenario that your program will fail. Why? We, when you want to print everything in reverse order, you need to keep every single entry the user is making and keep, read it and keep it in memory so you can print it in reverse order. Other than that, or I would, if, I told, if I told you, sort it in ascending order. And then after that, sort, sort and display it in descending order. If I do that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do it. Why? Because every single information the user is entering, you have to keep it. Obviously, as an IPC 144 student, you would say that I can get a big enough array like we did for the dictionary. We did it 100, right? It's not 100 things in a dictionary. It's probably like 55, but we do 100 just in case, right? But if I actually put 101 words in the file, our dictionary fails. It cannot function anymore. It's, uh, it's going to lose one of its entries, right? It, that's the reason. So how do we do this? I, me I mentioned that we can only do this using dynamic memory allocation, which means to create the array, I have to create a pointer. So for, for example, the integers that we talked about, I'm going to just write the exact same thing, print the, the number of integers in reverse order. So I'm going to say integer pointer array. So this integer pointer is actually an array that is supposed to be set later on. But to strictly and obsessively following the rules of dynamic memory allocation, for now we blindly follow these regulations. Later on we'll know when we cannot do it. It's like you say, thieves know the law the best because they know when they can not follow the rule and not get penalized, OK? So we have to be like that. We have to be expert thieves in programming, OK? So, but for now, we are all rookies. So you have to follow the instructions to the bone. An unused pointer is always set to a null pointer. So as soon as I create it, I either go null PTR or I use the universal way of initializing things to null. Universal way of initial, initializing things to null, anything, anything, integer, double, pointer, pass, whatever you have, anything you want to set completely to null, you put empty curly brackets in front of it. So I could have done integer pointer, ar pointer array, and I did this. It's the same at top. This is universal way of setting it to null. Just letting you know. If you see it somewhere, that's what it means, OK? So I'm going to so I'm gonna say 
setting things to null. Now, please, please understand that sometimes the thing I say, I define it in an incorrect way to ease the understanding in your brains. That curly bracket is actually a very sophisticated type of initialization that is introduced in, in new C++, uh, newer versions of C++, but the side effect of it is that. So that's not what it's only for. When I say it's a universal way, if someone told me, no, that's aggregation, you say, that's what I know up to this point. Wait, when I get higher, than thing, I'm going to explain to you exactly how it works. So, so remember that, OK? So, so we set it to null. Now we need to know how many integers we need, so we create an integer for number, OK? And now I can actually tell to the user uh, how many integers. OK, how many integers? For some reason, my computer breathes every now and then. It goes at that moment, it says, don't talk to you. I'm just enjoying my time. And I have to respect it, OK? So I'm going to say how many integers over here. And then I'm going to receive the integer. I'm going to say CN. And we are assuming that user is the same person. That never happens. Usually, they are lunatics. But uh, we're assuming they are saying they are not actually entered their grandmother's name over here. They are going to actually put a number for the things that they have. So how many integers over there? That's going to be uh, CN num. And now that we have it, we do the dynamic memory allocation for the array. And therefore, in here, I'm going to say uh, array is set to new int num. And now I have the array. As soon as you do this, not to forget, it's a good idea to say <laughs> delete array. To make sure that at the end it's deleted, I'm not going to have memory leak for now. But later on, we'll find out. And after you delete a pointer, again, it's obsessively, it doesn't make sense for me to do it. After deleting the array, make sure that your array is set to null PTR. Again, if you do it four weeks from now, I'm going to put a comment. Why the heck did you do that? Array is about to die. Why do you care if it's null or not? But for now, we just want to remember, you delete something, you wipe it out. OK? It's like you're eating, wash your dish after you eat. <laughs> Don't put the dirty dish in the sink. In this case, that's a disposable thing. We can throw it away so we don't care. But again, you know. So now that I have the array, it's regular programming from here. It's as if I have an integer with num bad uh, things in it, and I can do whatever I want to do with it. So in here, I can actually say uh, for, uh, I'm going to put an integer over here for the repetition. So, so I'm going to have four i set to 0, i less than num and i++, plus plus. and then in here I'm going to start getting the integers, so c out, show some kind of a row number over there for the user to see uh, what they are entering, not to get confused, and then I'm going to, in here, get the numbers one by one, and go to the next one over and over. And now that I have done this, I can do it backwards. Now I can actually say four, uh, uh, I set to num minus 1 because we know the index goes up to size minus 1. So it's going to go over there. And I greater than or equal to 0 because we know the smallest thing is the 0 and it's accept acceptable. And I minus minus. Now I can actually display everything backwards. I'm going to say C out array I. And put a little space up between so I can see. And I'm going to say C out and L. Are we OK with this? Right? So now if I run the program, it doesn't matter how big it is. I can actually do uh, whatever I want with it. OK, so how many integers? I'm going to say over here, 3. And I hit Enter, uh, Enter the integers. And it shows it in reverse order. Are we good? Yeah, I put this the same. I made a mistake. You are talking about 23s? What are you talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So for the heck of explaining that you don't have to always have uh, an array dynamically allocated, 
last time I actually made the number dynamic two. Yeah, last time I put a pointer for the number two, right? Yeah. We can do that. Like, it's not it's not necessary. But if because when you have what, why do we need dynamic memory allocation? Can anybody tell me? It's not just because we want to make your lives miserable. There's another reason for it too. <laughs> why? Hmm? That's the reason we shouldn't. <laughs> so I, the, the answer was memory leak. But because of memory leak, we don't do dynamic memory allocation. Because of memory leak, we don't do dynamic memory allocation. Yeah, first, two, two, two reasons. When the data is so big that you cannot contain it in your executable and you want to do it at runtime. Number two, when you don't know how many numbers you have and each time your program runs, your data size is different. Therefore, you need to set the size at the time. What is dangerous? With dynamic memory, it's... <laughs> Yeah, if, if, you, if you can do, absolutely right, if you can do something without dynamic memory allocation efficiently, do it, obviously. That's why it was ridiculous in my first thing that I actually made the num a pointer and I actually did it dynamically because it's an integer. I actually wasted memory because instead of just having one integer, I created an integer pointer, and then I created another integer holding the address, so I doubled the amount of size of memory that I used. But that's, and you gotta see in your workshop too, we are asking you to do so just for practice. So you know dynamic memory allocations that are done individually are possible too, okay? So, yeah, so just for the, heck of um, practice, I'm going to do the I over there dynamically. So integer, I'm going to pull it I pointer, <laughs> okay? And I'm going to say IP is equal to new int, and that's only one integer, so no square brackets. Now everything else works with it the exact same way. The only difference is that I have to say target of IP every single time instead of I. So now, the index of the loop is actually a dynamic integer somewhere because I'm nuts and I want to suffer. That's, that's why. There is no good reason to do something like that other than creating a bug over here. Because this minus minus will not reduce the, the, the number of target of IP, but it's gonna actually reduce the address. Therefore, your program is gonna crash here. So if you have a po target of something, remember minus minus is more strong. Right. You have to always, I have to do something about this intelligence thingy doing this. You cannot type a parenthesis, it closes it for you. <sighs> so let me do it over here, see if it's gonna allow me. <laughs> Isn't that dumb? I'm sorry, I like, uh, Microsoft, 2022, what the heck did you do? Uh, anyways, uh, anyway, that, that's crazy. Uh, so yeah, so that, that one is IP2++. So I'm gonna copy it, cause, uh, cause, or I'm gonna say over here, oh, if I put it close enough, probably it won't, okay, they heard me. Okay, <laughs> all right, so that's that. So, but this is okay, plus one is okay. And this has to be target of IP. See how many things I have to change for a, uh, for a stupid design. Now in here at the end, I have to delete that one. So I have to say delete, delete IP without brackets because it's only one integer, right? Because it's only one integer, I don't have to put a square bracket. Yes. Yeah, sure. IP is equal to null PTR2. So, so this one, I'm going to do it like this just to have fun. But remember, that's only for initialization. Way of initializing not setting. So in here, if I want to set it to null, I cannot put brackets in front of it. I have to say IP is equal to null PTR. Okay? The result is the same. No difference. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Done.
Now, let's take it to the next level. Let's uh, deal it with structures. I'm going to actually say, let's say I want to have s people's name read, and I want to print it in reverse order. And I want the names to be held dynamically, too. Oops. OK? That's a tough one, right? So because we don't know the knowledge for getting a name with spaces in, in C in yet, I'm going to use scanf. OK? Forgive me for that. But because we don't know it and we are doing DMA, I want to do the DMA here. So my apologies if I'm doing this without C in and C out and I'm using scanf and printf because, you know, uh, uh, we still don't know how to accept spaces, and somebody's name can have space in it, and C in with a string stops at space, okay? All right, so this one is DMA intro, and it's B dot DM, DMA intro dot CPP, B stash dot CPP, okay? So let's go with for the other one now. If I want to have a name read dynamically, what do I need to do? First of all, I need a name. So I'm going to say struct name. Let's have it first name and last name. How about that? To make it more juicy, OK? So in here, I'm going to have character M first. And it's going to be dynamic because I don't know what is its size, what is the size. And then I'm going to go character M last because I don't know what the size is, OK? And then I'm going to create a dynamic array of names when I'm actually reading it, OK? So first of all, <coughs> I need to be able to receive a name from entry. So again, bottom top design. The very first thing I need to do is to be able to read a name dynamically, correct? Read a name dynamically. So what do we need to do over here? To read a name dynamically, I need to, I need to be able to set a pointer to a value. Just to show you what do I mean by that, I'm going to do this. So let me see if I can actually go uh, do like this. Uh, I'm going to go screen up. Blank screen. All right. Then this is what I'm going to do. You almost have it, right? All right. So When you have a pointer pointing to a piece of memory, that's bad because you won't be able to see through it. Let me, let me just do something else. Change my mind. I'll try to write it small at the corner over there. So you can see on the screen, too. I think that's better, right? <laughs> I'm going to write it here, all right? So when you have a pointer pointing at something, when you have a pointer pointing at something, how, do you do, how does it work? So you have a piece of memory, correct? And that piece of memory of yours, it is someplace like that. And you have a pointer pointing to it, correct? So this is your pointer. Let's say integer pointer. And this is your integer. Any problem with that? Are we OK with this? OK. Now, if I want a function, if I want a function to read that thing dynamically, what should I call the function? Like, I want a function to read something from the entry and put it in here. Right? I need to do that. Uh, so I, I, want to act, I want it to actually, not to put it in here, 
or actually dynamically allocate this and then put the integer inside, a dynamic read, which means my program, my application, my uh, caller program has only an integer pointer. And there is no dynamic memory allocation. I want the function to dynamically allocate, put it over here, make the pointer point to it, correct? Right? So if I call that function read, so if I call that function read, okay, what do I pass to that function? Logic says an integer pointer, correct? Right? So if I actually put over here integer, and I'm going to call it pointer r because I want to read it, right? And I want to actually read this thing. So my program will go r is equal to new int, correct? Correct? Hoping that this is going to accomplish what I want it to do, right? And then, actually, let me make it smaller. You can see it over there, right? So I can write it smaller. So I'm going to call it over here void read integer pointer r. OK, you can read it over there, right? Hopefully. Now, in here, I'm saying c in. Uh, I'm going to say r is set to new int. And then I'm going to say c in. target of R, and hopefully mission accomplished, right? Correct? You okay with this? Now let's actually walk through it and see what's going on in here. If I walk through this, what is going to happen? The program starts, remember, so I have a function over here, main, so, or whatever, the caller program. So in here I have int main. In main, I have integer pointer p. And in here, I'm calling read, and I'm passing p to it. This is the program that I'm calling. So p is in main. If I actually walk through this, it's going to be something like this. This is my main. This is the pointer p, right? And the function read is going to get called. Whatever the P has will be passed to R, which is garbage. P is not pointing anywhere, correct? So in here, my function read will have R over here with garbage in it. Are we okay down to this point? Then it's going to say R is equal to new int. So R over here will hold the address of an integer, whatever the integer is. It will hold the address of an integer and point to it. So this r will point to a piece of integer, right? And then you're going to say c in r. Let's say one number goes into here, correct? And now the function read ends and r dies. Did anything happen to p? No, because the function created a new pointer. The value of p came in, nothing was sent back. So remember, if you want to read something to a pointer and pass it as, a, as, an, as an argument, the only way that you, are, you can do something like that is to pass a reference of a pointer, to make sure a new name for the already existing pointer is used in a function and not just a copy. Or you can return it instead of having like that, you can return the integer pointer. So don't receive anything in here. Create an integer pointer over here. And this is nothing in here. And you, over here, you're going to have integer pointer r, new int. You read it, and then you return r. So your read is going to change to this. Integer pointer is equal to read. That will work because it actually occupies the, the, 
the, the, the value, the integer value that you have in your dynamic memory, and returns the value back. So these are the tricky things that you need to understand about pointers. Remember that I told you nothing is passed by address in C language, everything is by value? That's what I meant. When you pass a pointer to another function, it actually creates a new copy of your pointer. So if you, can act, if you actually set it to a value, you didn't send anything back, you just created a local variable, and that's going to cause trouble. Try it, and you will see it is not going to work, OK? So back to business. Let's come back over here and see how we can actually do this. So to actually read a name dynamically, I can do two different things. Either I need, I have to return a character pointer and read it dynamically and send it back, or I can send it using a, a reference of a pointer. They're both valid, okay? So in your workshop two, you have a reference to a pointer. So I suggest I do that. I'm gonna actually write them both so you can see how it's done. First, let's do it easy way, to return. So I'm going to have over here a character pointer, read, OK? Read name, read uh, string, read C string. OK, let's put it like that. So read C string of mine, and in here I have to go, again, we are using CSDDIO because we don't know how to read spaces in our thing, in our, you know, okay, that's the reason we are. Okay. So, so I want to read. I don't know how a name, how big a name can be. How big a name can be? What is the biggest size of name that you can think of? Tell me a number. 20? I'll go 200. Okay. So, because it's in a function, I'm not wasting a memory, any memory. It's going to get created and poof, die afterwards. Where I store the name, that's going to be dynamic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a temp thing over here. I'm going to say character temp, say 201 or 200, something like that. This is not foolproof. If somebody enters more than 200, it's going to fail. But we want to just teach. The foolproof thing comes later. We'll, I'm going to explain what, how it's going to happen. Obviously, I want, to, I want it to be empty. Remember that thing? Anything you can set to null, that's one of the things. You don't need to even put an assignment in front of it. Just write it like that. That nullifies it. Now I'm going to say, uh, um, let's actually make it interesting. So in here, I'm going to say constant character pointer prompt. So to show a prompt. And I'm going to set that one to null pointer. Give the user an option to actually show a prompt before I want to do that. So in here, I'm going to say, if prompt exists, if it's not null, I'm going to say, I'm going to use printf, I'm so sorry, printf prompt. Right? So it's going to print the prompt. If it's so, and how many people are thinking, why didn't write percent %s? Do I need to write percent %s over there? OK. What does printer printf do? When you put, when you put, you so, so printf essentially prints a string, correct? That is, has format inside, correct? So if I say over here, hello, will it print it? So what's the difference for putting hello or the prompt? Potatoes, potatoes, right? It's going to print the prompt. I don't want to put any percent anything in it, so I don't care, right? So in here, I'm just going to say prompt. It's going to print the prompt if I need to. All right? So now I have the character pointer in here, obviously. We could do that dynamically too, but it's awful. I'm not, it's, uh, it's too confusing. I don't want to do that. So in here, I'm going to say scanf. I'm going to say read up to new line. We know that already. And skip the new line after and put it in the uh, temp, right? Now that I have the temp, I can actually measure it and see how big it is. How can I do that? C string, correct? Include C string. So in here, I'm going to say character. Let's put the pointer over here, just for the heck of it, character return, pointer return value, 
red, and I'm going to make it null. OK, now I'm going to say red is equal to new character, SDR len of temp plus 1. Right? I allocate it exactly to the size that I want, so I don't need to worry about it. I simply say SDR copy into the ret, the temp value. So now, if it's 50, ret is going to be 51. If it's 20, ret is going to be 21. If the length is, is fardad, it's going to be 7, because fardad is going to be with a null at the end. So it exactly does that one. And what do I do at the end? I'm going to say return ret. So my function returns where what I just read is. Easy. So it becomes dynamic. Anything that, so I'm going to say return dynamic C string. So we know that what it returns is dynamic and needs to be deleted after. OK? So this read is right now doing the exact same thing that I told you using a return statement. To write the exact same thing using a pointer reference, I'm just going to copy this. And thanks to C++, because I can overload, I'm going to remove this thing over here. And in here, I'm going to say, and I'm going to make it a void, viewed. OK, void. And in here, I'm going to say character pointer reference ret. And I don't need to return anything. Because now I'm receiving a reference of a pointer, anybody puts the pointer in there, ret becomes a new name for the pointer outside of that scope. Therefore, it's going to be set to whatever you want. Potatoes, potatoes, use whatever you want. But you cannot put the regular pointer in here, because then it's going to create a new pointer in your function, and that pointer dies at the end. You have a ginormous uh, memory leak with nothing accomplished. Got it? So that's my dynamic read, OK? And because it's getting bigger, what if we make this a module? How, how much time do we have? Uh, we have till one, uh, 10, uh, 5 or 5, right? I think our quiz is going to be online tonight. OK, or I'm going to open it for, I don't know, a day tomorrow so you can do it. OK, 10 minutes. So one person do it, the rest go see what he did. And <laughs> OK, don't worry. I have like 50 questions, and I'm asking five of them. So the chances that you have, say, have the same quizzes is very, very slim. OK, so uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, yes. Give me line number. Give me line number. Line number nine. Do you remember what an integer pointer, integer reference was? So remove character pointer, put integer instead. Ret becomes an integer point, integer reference. Correct. Pointers are just types. It doesn't make any difference. So if I want to call this function in my main, all I need to do is to, let's say, character pointer p. I can say read dynamic string. And I'm going to put over here p. And let's say, enter your name. I can do like this which means ret in here, because it's a reference of a pointer, becomes a new name for p, therefore sets p That's to what? Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Or you can do it like this. You can say p is equal to read dynamic c string, enter your name. OK? All right. Are we OK? Are we OK? And of course, after this, we have to delete it. So in here, I'm going to say C out, hello, P, and L. So I'm going to actually do it twice. <coughs> delete P. Is this correct? Is this program correct? Is
Is this program correct? Oh, you can't. Yeah, he's right. Okay? This program has memory leak. It's going to work, but it has memory leak because I have P. I create it dynamically, and I put it in a first one, and I print it beautifully. It shows, right? Then I'm going to call it again, overwrite the old one, so the one it was pointing will be lost. If I use it twice, I have to delete it. I did not delete it. I'm a bad boy. Okay? It has to get deleted. So in here, I have to have delete. What did you say? Delete it in the function? <laughs> it's like, would you like some hamburger? There we go. It's in the garbage. Okay. <laughs> You can't do that. All right. So you, if you delete it, a function is be gone. Please. Now, if I run the program, just walking through it correct, uh, quickly, I'm going to get 50 error message, which is talking about it is not secure. Uh, so come to me, copy. And that is why in part one of workshop two, I actually wrote the C string. So the functions string copy, string compare, string len, all those things I wrote it over there. Okay, so you don't have to include C string. <coughs> so learn it. Take a look at it, see how it works. Okay? So one more time. Let's see if I have any other errors. Yes, what is that? Uh, redefinition of parameter ret. Why? Where? Oops, <laughs> clicked at the wrong place. Line 12. Line 12. Oh, this one already has a red. I don't need that. Yeah, because it's, a, it's in a parameter list, right? The other one needs it because I don't have it in a parameter. So that's how functions are. Every single argument in a function is a variable of the function that is initialized at function call. Okay? <clears throat> so now it's going to come and it's going to, so for the first one, it's going to pass it. So P goes, the, the, the reference of P is going to go to read dynamic string. Therefore, ret is now P. Now it's going to create the temp show the prompt because it's not null. So if we look at here, we'll see that the prompt is right there. Shows the prompt. And then scanfs. And I hit enter. Now it's going to see what is the length of bar that Suleiman Lush. It didn't read. Did it? It didn't read. Why it didn't read? Oh. What is my mistake? No, no, what is my mistake? Debugging time. It didn't read. Scanner failed, it didn't read. Why? Debugging time. I make this mistake all the time. Why it didn't read? Thank you. 1% midterm. Add it to your midterm. OK? You haven't that, didn't have that in this class? Those people who answer questions, uh, sometimes I give them a mark for their midterm. OK? So he, he added, he just got 1% for his midterm. OK, there you go. I forgot to say, up to that carrot thing. So it tried to skip actually backslash. It. I said read backslash n, which is wrong. That's regular expression, right? So I'll stop, and I'm going to do it again. So it comes in, goes up, prompts, scanf. Hit enter. And now, where am I? Now, this is weird. It is supposed to read the first one and skip the second one. See, that's why I don't like scanf stuff. Why it didn't accept it? 
Okay, let me remove the second one. Maybe because uh, the interface over here gets backslash r backslash n. Let's just try it and see what happens now without even that one. Let me see why. Let's try one more time. Do I, am I making a mistake that I, this one I do, I have to have the carrot thingy, but the other one just hung, it didn't go through. One more time. Okay. Now it read it, but now I have a backslash n in a buffer. So I have to flush the keyword because the next one is not going to pick it up properly. But anyways, we'll fix that. I don't know why that backslash n didn't work. It was supposed to work. I read one, I skip one. Anyways, so now I get, uh, I dynamically allocate. So ret is big enough to hold that part at Sully Manlu thingy. I'm going to copy everything into it. It comes back up. It says, hello, part at Sully Manlu, and then deletes it. Now the next one goes, it's going to do the exact same thing, but this time it's going to actually return the value. So now it's going to skip it and not read it because I have a backslash in, in the buffer, I think. See? <laughs> it didn't work, so I have to flush it. Anyways, so keyboard flush is needed. How do we flush? Anybody remember? So uh, void flush, flush key while get care, get care is the one, right? Is not equal to backslash n. I think that's it, right? That's flushing key. Let's try it. And then try it again. This time I'm just going to run it, and that's going to be hung over there. There we go. Stop it. <laughs> Let me just run it, see if it works. Now it works. Okay, so it flushes. Anyways, I flushed the keyboard. Are we okay with this? All right. So now that I have this, it's a good idea to put this thing in a in a uh, um, in a module because I'm going to keep adding stuff to this, and we might be able, we might be able to use it later on. And it's cluttering the whole thing over here. It's going to uh, ruin everything. I don't want that. So in here, I'm going to create uh, a header file. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, utils as usual. Dot c. Uh, dot h. Again, include uh, if not define. SDDS utils H. Later on, <clears throat> add these things to the utils that you have. So I'm going to bring uh, those things in here. SDDS, following the rules, bringing these right in there. Copy. Oh. I know. I'm just going to, I'm lazy, so I'll do it like this. <clears throat> so I'm going to copy. Uh, it's still in a buffer, so I'm going to do this and this and this. And default value for arguments are not in the, oh, it is perfect, actually, are not in the definition. So now I'm going to create, look at my utils. Is utils something? Utils. Okay, and I'm going to create the CPP file. And uh, include utils.h and namespace sdds and put everything in it, removing the default values, also adding the, the header files I need, 
I don't need anything in here. I'm going to put it right in here. So now, and you can, you can use this for anything you want. All these things are uh, for you to use. Uh, do I have IO stream in here at all? I don't. No. Save. Now in here, I'm going to just say include. And these things, I don't think I need them. I'm going to say include. Uh, utils.h and namespace sdds. Compile and run it, make sure it works. Errors, I have matching problem. Uh, what do I have problem here with? I didn't. Sorry. One more time. And we're good. It compiles. Now let's do the name. <clears throat> so now I want to read the name dynamically. OK? So what do I need to do? I want to read one name. I pass its reference. So in here, I'm going to have void ugh, read name. And in this read name, I'm going to pass a name reference name. And that's it, I think. Now in here, I'm going to say name dot first will be equal to uh, uh, read dynamic string first name. And the other one, I'm going to use it using a reference. So the other one's going to read dynamic string just for you to see how the both of them are, call, are called name dot M last, last name. So now the name is read dynamically. Now I do the exact same thing I have done with the integers, but for this one, which means, <clears throat> let me kind of cheat. So in here I'm going to go, what is this? Uh, this is where I want to go. So this one was DMA intro, right? So remember this name thingy that I've done? I'm just going to copy that. Copy. I'm going to write the main over here exactly the same way. Obviously, I'm going to take that stupid pointer out so it doesn't confuse me. So integer pointer array, that's going to be name a pointer array. Right? What's the difference? Integer pointer, name pointer, OK? Now, in here, I don't need this. I'm going to say over here, how many names? Right? Then I'm going to say array is equal to new name num. Correct? Now, in here, I'm going to say i equals 0, i less than num, and i plus plus. I regret what I did over there. <laughs> i plus plus. And I'm going to show the uh, uh, um, what should we call it the the row, but I'm going to go to new line because it's two things. I don't want it to be in front of it. Now in here I'm going to say C in array. No, not C in. I'm going to say what is the thing? Read name. And in here I'm going to say array uh, i. Okay. And then I'm going to display everything in reverse over here or going from name. So as you see, the logic is the same. The only reason I did this is to show you it doesn't matter one integer or one compound statement that does crazy things. It does not matter. The C out, I have to have a display name, sorry. So void display name. Uh, oh, display is fine. And in here we are. In C++, why did I say read name? Read is fine. It is a name, right? OK, read. And in here, I'm going to have display constant name reference n. And in here, I'm going to say C out n dot first and a space n dot last. And L goes to new line. So that displays the name. So in here, I'm going to say 
display uh, array i. And that's going to show the array in reverse order now. Obviously, after I'm done, I'm going to delete the array. I don't need to go to new line. If each one goes to a new line. And sure, set the array to null. And that's a dynamic compound statement reading. Everything is exactly the same. I just did a bottom top design. I first took care of reading the name. After it's done, I applied the exact same logic to the integer, but this time it's a name. Now that name could be a school, uh, a car, whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference, okay? The only thing of the array point to a dynamic memory. First name and last name are all dynamic, right? By deleting that thing, I made ginormous memory leak. Because it is a compound thing, I have to free the memory for every single name. So I have to, after it's done, say for i equals 0, i less than uh, num and i plus plus, I have to delete the memory of every single name because each one of them is pointing to somewhere. So essentially, this is what happened. I created a dynamic array of names, so that's my name, pointing to a dynamic array of names, right? But each name is pointing to some place. First name, last name. First name, last name. First name, last name. These are all dynamic, so what I did was that I deleted this one. What about all those little ones that, were, that got allocated before? I have to make sure every individual uh, piece of memory is deallocated before I can do anything over there. And that's not a difficult thing to do. It's just kind of painful. We're going to le later on learn that every single object in C++ is responsible enough to take care of its own stuff when it's dying. We're going to learn that. Okay, so don't worry about it. Now it's painful. When we actually get to it, you'll see that you can actually tell to name, wipe your stuff up. And when you say delete name, automatically it's going to wipe its memory. So don't worry about it. But now that we don't know, we have to painfully go through it. So either write a function for it, which I always prefer, which means I'm going to call it void free name memory, and in here I'm going to pass a name reference n, and in here I'm going to say delete n dot first, and delete n dot last. And that frees one by one, so in here I'm going to say free name memory and I'm going to pass array i to it. And that, boo, deletes individual memories. Memory, memories of each name. And this one, Delete the name array. Are we okay with this? Yes. Yeah. No. The fun if nothing is deleted, unless you do it, you allocated it, you have to delete it. What do you mean by local function? I did a local function. That's called free, free, mem, free name mem. That, did, that is the local function. I didn't get the question. So. <laughs> mm. Yes. Array of A, 
by its name. If you just see, when you create a dynamic array, the name of the array is holding the address of the dynamic memory. So you say delete square cracket A, everything is gone. Because we did that individually in the name, first and last, they are both pointers pointing to arrays, we have to individually delete them. We, if you wanted to, and if you don't like the function, I could do, maybe, maybe that function made it more confusing. Maybe it would be better if I did this so everybody understands exactly what happens. So in here, I could say instead of that, I can say, array i so each element's memory is being deleted now it's the same effect essentially i'm going through i'm going to say everyone was dynamic first i'm going to delete all the first names and last names now i'm going to delete what is pointing at them poof so it's two levels no i don't need to if that first name and last name were like arrays, like M first, like 50, 50 character array, then because it's automatic, it would have been gone automatically. Remember, you allocate, you delete. System allocates, system deletes. Because I did not mention over here what, if I had it like this, Then I don't delete the, 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 the first because it is an automatic variable. And when name is gone, it's going to be gone. The scope is over, it's going to die. But because it is not, it is done by me, then I have to delete it before it's gone. It's always like that. You create, you delete. System creates, system deletes. Wait. I think we have time to do the quiz. It's 4.55, we have 10 minutes. Let me see how long is the quiz. Log into Blackboard, pardon me? Are you trying to <laughs> make the quiz online? <laughs> let me see, let me see if I can actually. You know what? Do your first quiz. I'm going to give you 24 hours to do it. The heck with it. OK. The first one, I'm going to do it that way. OK? But you have only, but I'm give like, if it's eight questions, I'm going to give you eight minutes. OK? One minute for each question. All right. All right. Uh, so now ask your question. This? This? This is a name. It's a name. Array i is a name structure. Because in here I said name array. OK. Uh, so let's run this and see if it works first. And then uh, uh, pro let's see if I'm going to get any errors or anything like that. So how many names? I'm going to go only two. I don't want to put say So I'm going to say two. So fir first name, last name, really. Um, <laughs> I have to flush after uh, asking the question. So where is the, when I hit enter, how many names I have to flush over here? Flush, oh, it's uh, C in, really? Um, half C in, half that one? Oh, uh, flush. That's awful, by the way. What I just did is awful. Scan up and see in and see how it makes. Actually, <laughs> printf. <laughs> We're going to come to see in and see out. I'm going to teach you quickly how they are done so we don't have to do this. Scanf percent d address of num. And then the rest are see out. Gosh. Um, um, yeah, let them be. I'm not going to waste my time on that. And here I'm going to go. Yeah, 
you should never do what I did right now, mixing C again, C out, and standard input output together. OK? Only one. So how many names? Two. Part out. Silly. Thread. Whatever. OK? So now it's reverse, and we're done. OK? So anyways, walk through it at home and see what it is. And that was dynamic memory allocation. Have fun with workshop two. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have at 4.15, I'm going to have an online overview of workshop two and how everything is done in it. Join. Yeah, there, the link is on the workshop page. If you click join here, the, uh, you, I have, I'm going to add over there. You have to use your real name, please. Okay? Because it's an, uh, you're coming as a guest into a big blue button session, you can write anything. So, again, no Luke Skywalkers, no Princess Leia's, please. Okay? Yes. <clears throat> Loud. Always, always. Yeah. Okay. But come if you can. All right. Any questions before we terminate this? Yes. Never. Yeah, but in object-oriented book. But it's a bad thing to do. To, so you know what? I'm going to actually pr probably, <clears throat> I'm going to probably not post this and change everything to, to, to printf and then post it because this is awful. Actually, I have time. I'm going to do it by 505. Let me just remove IO stream over here. Percent S, percent S. Don't mix ever these two together. It's not good for your health. What are you looking? It's the same as yours. Mixed up what? I, I use like uh, CNSC. Oh, and you and you pay for it. That's okay. okay. No, it's okay. It's uh, uh, now you know. Okay, don't do it again. <laughs> So that's that. What else do we have over here? C out. Do we have any C outs? No? That's it? Run it one more time. All right. So now I post it. OK. <coughs> so let me, I'm going to close Visual Studio. And where is the? And commit, DMA, oh, commit and push. And we're done.